I understand why people have concerns, and I think they're legitimate. And and I think in in a in a general sense, I I think being worried about pesticides is a great thing. But I think this is about has to do with um, really evaluating risk and and what we risk with the application of. Um, a bacillum that's been used since the 1960s on organic vegetables, which has a half-life in the atmosphere and in the environment that it's sprayed in, I think conservatively it's about two weeks, versus gypsy moths who, once they get established, could be here forever and could potentially forever change this ecosystem. And, and I, I challenge people not to think about this only emotionally, but to really be thoughtful and really be rational and analytical about this and say, which, where is the greater risk here? And what could potentially damage our lives here, our ecosystem here, our lifestyles here, our health? Um, I don't think there's any comparison. I don't, I don't think to be worried about BT um, versus gypsy moths, it makes absolutely no sense to me. So I, I, I would plead with people to please think about that. Um, again, understanding that, that we've got lots of historical reasons to be worried about pesticides and asking questions isn't a bad thing but ask good questions and look to look to careful sources there's a lot of misinformation out there the internet's a fabulous tool but it also is a place where you can get lost because if you don't know how to read it analytically you can read stuff that looks like it's you know gospel um, and has absolutely no basis in scientific fact whatsoever. So let's learn to read carefully, let's learn to talk to each other and hear each other. And bottom line, I think the question people have to ask about them, so, uh, about this particular situation in Ojai is, do we want to run the risk of losing this, of losing this place? Because that's what that, these moths could do. And I think every question and every sense of discomfort about what tactics are used to address the issues of this moth has to have that question in the background. Do we want to run the risk of losing this? If the answer is no, then I think we need to um, have some faith in the folks that are trying to help us make sure that doesn't happen. Are you supportive of the California Department of Food and Agriculture's eradication efforts? I, I absolutely am supportive of the Department of Food and Agriculture's eradication efforts. I think that um, I know that none of us are excited about spraying, um, and I think if in a perfect world that wouldn't happen, um, but I don't know of any other uh, efforts to eradicate gypsy moss that are even close to as effective as BT, and I don't think we can run the risk of finding out what happens if they get established here. I think if you do a risk assessment, it's very clear that the risks of a BT spraying are so much less than the risks of a gypsy moth infestation that I'm absolutely supportive of this program. I get it. I get that people are really nervous about implications of spraying, and there's a lot of um, legitimate worries that have emerged over the years from, from you know, the DDT history and things like that. And I think all of that comes into play with people's responses. I think they're very emotional responses. I think they're heartfelt. But I think if you look at this carefully and analytically, and there's a risk assessment, there's BT, which gets sprayed very carefully. It's not an aerial spraying. Um, that I forget the half-life in it is, is, I think, conservatively two weeks and it's gone, versus this uh, moth that if it gets established here in California, it could forever change the ecosystem here, forever. We, because the, the, the problems on the East Coast is that BT has been used there. Um, it helps to keep the populations managed, but once a population gets established, w nobody's found a way to get rid of them. Um, and, and as I said, th th this could just be horrendously, horrendously devastating to this ecosystem. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day, and her comment was that she would prefer not to run the risk that the Ojai Valley ends up looking like Las Vegas. And, and potentially that could happen, um, given how, if there was a serious infestation here, given how um, aggressive these moths are and how they eat everything. If that once, they get, once they get established and there's a big population, they eat pretty much anything that's green.